the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It seems absolutely appropriate today on the Feast of the Holy Spirit and the Feast of the Holy Trinity to go straight to the end of St. Paul's letters to the Corinthians, the second Corinthians, the final verses at the end of chapter 13, where he writes, He charis tu kiriu Jesu Christu, ki hi agape tu theu, ke hi kina nia tu agiu panevmatos meta panton imon. It was read exactly before the anaphora, the very beginning of the anaphora of our liturgy here this morning. Every liturgy begins with these lines, and it seems fitting to read them in Greek, in the original. For the words are really important for us. Charis, grace, of Jesus Christ, our Lord. The love, agape, not just any old love, not just some passing love, but the love that binds friends and families together, the vivifying love, agape. And then, with regards to the Holy Spirit, this wonderful word, kinonia. It's sometimes translated as fellowship. We translate it here as communion. If I say the word fellowship, many people are going to think of J.R.R. Tolkien's famous work, The Fellowship of the Ring. They wouldn't be wrong to think of that because there is a fellowship here. But that word, kinonia, kini, koine, means common. It means to bring together. And so the word communion is also an appropriate way to render this blessing, this blessing of the Holy Spirit. And that leads, really, to a story about an island that's very well known in the Russian church abroad, Tubabao, in the Philippines, the Far East Island in the Philippines, the one that receives the typhoons. In 1953, a camp was closed. It had contained 6,000 people who had been there for about four years. So yes, an entire party of refugees who had escaped from Shanghai and Harbin, and other places, no doubt, were there, crowded on this island, and they set up life there. They celebrated at least three, maybe four, Holy Spirit days on the island. And they waited. They waited to see what their fortunes would be, where God would take them. Literally, these 6,000 souls became very much like, in their flesh, the Jews, the Hebrews, in Egypt, waiting for their Moses to deliver them, to split the sea and take them to their new home. Well, they had a Moses. They had John of Shanghai, soon to become John of San Francisco, but not before he was John of Paris and Brussels. They had their Moses with them, and the one thing that he had that we can count on in our time, as we're waiting also for some deliverance in our time, we're waiting for deliverance from an illness, a worldwide pestilence. We're waiting for deliverance now from civic unrest and severe consternation in our society. We need, to, we need a Moses, and we have our Moses. His name, Jesus Christ, the living and the true God, who gives us the Holy Spirit, who sends it forth. I must be brief today because we're going to conclude our liturgy with the Vespers and the kneeling prayers to re-invite the Holy Spirit into our lives. The, par the prayers are somewhat penitential. They cause us for the first time since Pascha to get back on our knees again, those of us who are able. Cause us to come back into repentance. I'd like to make some promises for the future, since today the word is brevity, but also holiness. I'd like to speak about the four ages of the Holy Spirit. Let me review them with you. The Holy Spirit hovering upon the waters in darkness. The Holy Spirit, the first age, is even before Genesis, because it's God's Spirit. The second age of the Spirit is the Old Testament, and we know this because in the book of Numbers, which was read last night at vigil, 
If you get a chance, go and look at the vigil text. I know I preach this a lot, but on this day, there is an absolute treasure trove of texts, a fantastic, beautiful melding of scripture, liturgy, spirituality, and simply the raw mystery of the Holy Ghost coming into our life. It's all there in printed form in the vigil. Numbers 11, chapter 11 was appointed last night, where in the camp of the Israelites, and they have the tabernacle, because the tabernacle contains the ark, the pieces of the manna, and they have this already now established in the life of Moses while he's amongst them. The Holy Spirit breaks out amongst them, amongst the 70, the 70 elders of the people, just as we have 70 apostles that receive apostleship from the 12. And they come to Moses and they ask, what are we to do? Should we suppress this? And Moses says, no, we should wish and beg God that more of the action of the Holy Spirit would come upon us. And so it happens. In another reading, Ezekiel chapter 36, beautiful reading. The Israel, the Hebrews, are in exile in Babylon and waiting on God, just like that island of Tubaba, waiting for God to deliver. And God sends his promise, and he says through the prophet Ezekiel, I will send my spirit upon you to cleanse you, to remove your sins and to restore you. It's a beautiful text. And then finally, in the Gospel of John, John 20, Jesus Christ enters into the room with his disciples. This is after the resurrection. This is the glorified Jesus Christ. And he says to them, peace be to you. And I breathe upon you the Spirit. This is the beginning now of the third age of the Spirit the beginning of the life of the Spirit of the Church, which will come to make the mysteries of Pentecost, which will be the sacraments of the Church. Our baptism is rooted in this moment. Our life in Christ is rooted in this moment. For as St. Paul absolutely tells us, no one calls Jesus Christ Lord unless he be under the power and influence of the Holy Spirit. It's the third age and it's the beautiful age. And then finally, there is for us the fourth age of the Spirit, and this is a promissory for the future. Myself or my concelebrants no doubt will speak on this. It's so important because now comes the indwelling of the Holy Ghost inside of us. Now, in the Orthodox Church, and particularly the Russian Church, this notion of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit is deep and it is profound. For this acquisition of the Holy Spirit was, is, is and was represented in so many saints, I lose count. Nevertheless, it's part of our tradition, and we can receive it as well. I would like to leave, out the, leave possible for us to hope on this, as it was on that island in the Philippines. St. John would go to the north, the south, and the east and west part of the camp. He would bless the entire camp, 6,000 people. That was his daily practice. He protected them, like Moses with the bronze serpents. No typhoon came during those four years. And for us, we know why. He had the indwelling of the Spirit. They had their Moses. We have our Moses. And now comes the call to become more and more like Moses, more and more like St. John's, more and more like Christ, raised up in him, ready to die for him, alive in Christ. Last week, it was my pleasure to speak to you about atheism and Jesus Christ, whether he is wounded immortally or in the case of superstar. You know, the lead singer, his name was Jeff Fernhold. He was the man who first brought that role to life on the stage in Broadway. He was an atheist when he began. He was a good singer, of course, and that's why he was chosen for the role. And he sang the role, and he did apparently a very good job of it. By the end of the run of singing that rock opera, the Holy Ghost 
yes indeed, came upon him. He converted. He met Christ, the real Christ, the immortal, the beloved, the one that we call sweet Jesus in our prayers. He met him, and for the rest of his life, he lived to be 68, he became a minister, and he preached Christ, and he lived it out. Oh, he kept on singing, it's true, and he may have made some bad choices in his professional career life, yes, but the Holy Ghost was active. The Holy Ghost goes where he will, changes whom he will, does as he will, for he does the will of the Father, because he is sent into the world by the Son. These are the gifts that we're receiving today. We have our Moses, we have our Christ, and now we have God's ineffable Spirit with us. May you all be blessed. May you take comfort. May you receive the Comforter. And may the Holy Ghost be active and operative in your life. God bless you. Blessings of the Lord be upon you through his grace and love towards mankind, always now and ever and up to the ages of the ages.